uh, first of all, we have to thank you. It's, it's our honor that you are present in Nigeria. And I believe this is uh, your first time in Nigeria, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I would just like, time. yeah, good. I would just like to know your, I mean, how do you see the country? I mean, on a lighter note. The country is very nice, you know, um, having been in Kenya and a few days later in, uh, a few months before I was in Tanzania. Now, before okay. coming here, I was in Nairobi. And now I'm here, I saw a bit of Lagos, even if we didn't have the idea of visiting the town. And yesterday I was taken through Abuja and I think I'm really, I'm proud to see oh. what I see from many points of view. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, I'm, great, I'm great. Happy. We are impressed and happy that you have this impression of, uh, of Nigeria. Thank you very much. So um, the assembly of conference in Abuja concludes the consultation for the provincial and provincial council members of Africa, Nigeria, Nije, that is ANN. How was the process and the responses of the conference? I am very happy um, and thankful for the collaboration that I have seen uh, because this was uh, a desire, the two, let's say sisters, the province of AFO and AFW, they desired to organize themselves better for a better animation, a better um, government of the religious life of the conference. So I'm thankful because they had that courage to pray, to desire, and also to start walking towards that uh, dream. And I've seen years of collaboration, of dialogue, of a study, because it is also the fruit of studying how many houses, how many vocations we are getting. And now there are more studies that we are doing at this moment because we are asking, are we going to have enough rectors for our houses, enough parish priests for our schools and lay people, the Salation family, the lay collaborators, are they motivated enough so that this thing that is happening is not only for the SDBs, but also for the Salation family, for the pastoral and education uh, community, and even for the young people themselves. So I've seen a lot of prayers, motivation, a long process of dialogue. And since I came here also, I felt a welcoming spirit, a witness in uh, every community and mostly in the communities where the assemblies were held. Uh, I mean, in Lagos, in Ondo, and here in Abuja, but even in the other communities, it was a feast, it was a celebration. Wow. And I don't know why they didn't tell me, uh, maybe they wanted to surprise <laughs> me. And if that was the plan, exactly. they really <laughs> succeeded. Even yesterday when we went to, when we went to Vianney, I didn't know that the children were waiting for me there. Wow. Now, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very good. It, it has been a long way and we know that there is still a long way ahead, but if we keep on praying, dialoguing and if there are mistakes or misunderstandings we just yeah. dialogue and fix the errors i think if you continue like this um we will make it the dream is coming true good uh good yeah with all these positivities and uh, goodness that you experienced so far definitely there must be one or two challenges that you've encountered i mean in this uh, course of uh, beginning this uh, consultation experience so what are your challenges so far encountered? The challenges, um, first of all, were not mine as such because the pandemic has challenged everybody. Yeah. And now we are talking about movements, about future plans, about some people who will become missionaries, even if it's within Africa. So the pandemic is a big challenge, but the director major already reminded us that when there are challenges, that is when we show that we are brothers of Jesus, who was a man for the challenges. And even Don Bosco, everything was very hard on him. And he also worked when there was a pandemic and he showed us the way. So those um, challenges are really, in fact, you chose the right words because some people say obstacles, difficulties, <laughs> and you say challenges. So it's opportunities to show if you are really motivated. Communication was not very easy because not everybody has a good internet connection. 
And at times you ask for information and you get them after one week or one month. But we are still getting um, uh, on with that. I've seen also the challenge of fear. In fact, uh, in today's gospel about the talents, that was the worst uh, word in that gospel of the talents. Someone who fears, who is afraid. And in some, some of my brothers, there is still that fear in the face of uncertainty. How will it be with this young Nigeria? Because Don Bosco in Nigeria is made of young people, young confreres. So some people may fear that uh, putting such a treasure in the hands of young people. But we are actually people who believe in the young. So I think it's a, it's a, real, it's a good challenge. Even the uncertainties of the future, but we are men of faith. And we should do as Abraham, as Jesus, as Don Bosco, who has said to, to live as if they see the invisible. So me personally, I'm not afraid. And in fact, I can see many who say, we don't know the future, but we know in whom we have put our trust. So the fear becomes also the, the place where you show that it is God, it is not us. Exactly. The last thing I want to say is yeah. that maybe it's a challenge giving birth because it means waiting. It means carrying something or somebody that you don't see, but that is there. It means a mystery for tomorrow. Giving birth is painful. Been, giving birth is also the very first separation that each one of us goes through. It means also cutting the link with the mother. The mother may be the AFW province, I'm sorry. So I think that challenge of giving, giving birth is what made you and, and I be here because someone dared to give birth, to believe that this child one day will have to grow, will have to fly with his own wings. It means carrying the cross, but without that cross, there is no salvation. So even those challenges, I think, they are an opportunity for us to show what we are, to show who is with us. And that is why the apostle says, uh, I don't fear because I know in whom, whom I trust. And if someone tells me that I'm weak, that I'm young, he doesn't know that when I'm weak, weak that is when I'm strong because I'm not alone. Exactly. Uh, these words of yours are quite uh, impressive <laughs> and uh, encouraging. Already you said something about... Uh, uh, my next question, which uh, is the hopes and aspirations that you foresee for this new province. Do you feel that we can champion this new challenge and opportunity before us? I think that uh, if the answer is no, it means that God makes mistakes himself. <laughs> but yes, so God has already shown that he trusts boys and girls of this country and the nearby countries, because it's not about Nigerians, but the solutions of Nigeria together, even with those who will come from uh, Togo, from Benin, from Ghana. So this is the Don Bosco that God has already uh, chosen. And if we are here, it's because uh, thanks to the missionaries, God came, he gave us this charism, and you can see how many um, superiors now, directors of communities, members in the provincial council uh, were born here. So God has already shown in the church as a whole, we have cardinals, we have bishops, priests, and so on. We have lay people who are prepared. And now in all congregations, we already have young uh, religious who have shown that the church doesn't make mistakes when she trusts them. The congregation doesn't make mistake when she hears someone saying, we are ready for this. The congregation thinks and prays and says, yes, I'm taking you seriously because I've got signs that you are ready. And I've heard that readiness in the hearts, in the voices, in the songs, in the masses. So I don't have any single doubt about this. And I think it's going to work because it is already uh, working. And my prayer is only to keep on listening to God's voice because he's the one who called us and I'm speaking in the past, but he's still calling today and tomorrow he will continue to call. If we listen to his voice, not to the tempest, 
not to the waves as Peter did, then we will not stumble and fall. So we should just keep on listening to God's voice and strive to be faithful to him or allow him himself to be faithful to his own plan. And we are just part of that faithfulness, part of that beautiful dream. Yeah, good. We are part of that faithfulness and beautiful dreams. Your last words for the conference and also the young people whom we are working with, working for and working with. Yes, uh, I will avoid to say two different things as if I'm addressing two categories. Why? Because I think we are part of the same plan. Mm. And uh, at times we think we Salishans and the Salishan family, we collaborate in the salvation of the young as if the young people receive salvation, receive the charism, but that is against our history. In fact, it's with the young people that Don Bosco created what we are today. It was not with priests and brothers, it was with boys. So I'm going to say the, the same thing, the same thought. And uh, if we can say we are saving young people, in fact, it is God who is saving young people, young people also save us because without them, we are nothing, we are nobody. So we need them and they need us. And I've had already here in Africa and even in Italy, young people who make you pray, young people who tell you, Father, I count on you. So in fact, they open the gates of heaven for us. That's why I'm sharing the same thought for all. I think it is God, as I said, who called us to this uh, project. So we should all, religious, lay men and women and young people, continue to entrust our present and our future to, to God. Because I started saying that God doesn't make mistakes. And I'm happy that today when we are sharing this interview is the day in which the church is thanking God for an African saint, St. Augustine. Yeah. It's the day in which the gospel is telling us about the talents that each one of us received according to what he's able to do, to be. So God doesn't make mistakes when he chose you, when he chose us together. And if he chose us, it's because he sees something in us. Yes. What did he see so that he can trust us and to call us in this plan? What did Jesus see in you so that he goes away and says, I leave you my church, I leave you my congregation, I leave you the salvation of my boys and girls? What did he see? And if he saw that thing, who are we to say that it's over? things are spoiled. No, he saw something and we should believe that he saw. Maybe we should also try and see that in ourselves without too much pride to see that beautiful thing, to see that thing in every boy, in every girl. We don't have choice. I mean, we, ha we, have, we have to trust our boys and girls, otherwise there is no future. We have to trust our brothers and sisters. We have to trust our lay people because God was the first one who trusted. And with that trust, we are strong because each one of us has something to contribute in this. If you want to call it uh, cooking, each one has something that he brings. If you call it like music, each one has an instrument to play or a different voice so that we get a beautiful harmony. And now and then I need your help or your prayer or piece of advice, maybe tomorrow you will need me. So we are not here because we are perfect. Salutations are not perfect. Our sisters are not perfect. The collaborators are not perfect or the boys and girls, but together we are strong. And it is together that we will show the better face of the gospel and the better face of the charism of Don Bosco. And I would like to finish with this woman that I found here in the province, mostly when I went to Akure, I saw that beautiful church. I don't know how it was built because it's something magical. <laughs> there, the altar. And I said, after two months in Africa, I've been in Kenya, up a hill, I saw that woman. I mm. came here in Nigeria, I found that woman. I think the Salation Africa has a future because we have a mother. But that mother is able to challenge us because her last words are, listen to my son, and do whatever he tells you. So I would like to entrust this new province to her. And that is why one of the new, the three new province 
had to carry her name because there is no Saint Joseph without her. There is no Atemi Dezati without that woman. And we are proud to be her children. Wow, 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 wow. It's been, let's say, a time of grace with you having this yes. period to share uh, your thoughts on uh, your experience so far and your words of wisdom. I would say that uh, we are really grateful as, uh, as a conference from Nigeria. We're really grateful for your presence. The people that you met all are happy. The young people also, they are happy to have uh, uh, seen you around. So we hope that uh, next time when you come, the interview will be in a perfect situation <laughs> and all that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And let's keep praying for one another. And also remember us as we uh, enter into this new phase in our salvation growth as, as a people, as a province, uh, and as Africans. All the best as you continue to visit other countries to do the same thing which you did here. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I hope to see you uh, around the Feast of Don Bosco, the end of January or the early days of February to celebrate the real <laughs> beginning of this new phase with the installation of our new provincial and the whole team. So I hope to see you soon and let's keep on praying for one another. Thank you. So thank bye you. Bye. God bless you. Bye. Thank you. God bless you too. <laughs>